Yeah, these guys are like, you're the reason why we lost. Yeah, dude, me, I'm the reason. If they had listened to me, I think that they would probably have, unironically, a better shot at winning the damn election. Hmm. So yeah, in that regard, I am the reason why the Democrats lost because they wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. So let's get to Colin Allred. Colin Allred ran a campaign for New Republic. I wrote about the Southern social media strategy, Olivia Juliana, Isaiah Martin, and the rot of the core of modern campaigning. Okay. Now Colin Allred still, in spite of all of this, okay, what the uh, ran uh, better than Kamala Harris did. Okay. When imagining the platonic ideal of a Democrat running for a national office in a red state, the party's old guard expects certain boxes to be ticked. The first among them is always the same. They have to be tough. A trade often signified by military service. Think Amy McGrath, the Kentuckian Marine, self-described as fiscal conservative who challenged Mitch McConnell. Or MJ Hagar, an Air Force veteran who took on Senator Texas Senator John Cornyn in the same year. Next, you must cut an ad that receives tremendous national attention. Then watch the money faucet flow. McGrath, for instance, outraised McConnell by more than $32 million. Hagar, in addition to outraising Cornyn, cut viral ads that had previously received vocal support from Hamilton creator Lynn Manuel Miranda. The latest high-profile iteration of this brand of politician was Colin Allred, a Dallas native, a civil rights lawyer, and a former NFL linebacker who took on Senator Ted Cruz. His statewide strategy was codenamed Texas Offense, and his ads were spliced with mentions of his glory days on the gridiron. He grabbed attention and nearly outraised Cruz, a prodigiously unpopular candidate in what was one of the most expensive races in the country. And like McGrath and Hagar before him, Allred lost by a humiliating margin. Okay? Ted Cruz, one of the least popular, one of the least popular Republicans in the entire Senate was able to put numbers on the fucking board. Okay? He was able to put up 970,000, almost 1 million more votes than Colin Allred, okay? Literally. While Cruz underperformed Trump in counties across the state, Allred also underperformed in almost all aspects of the state's most populous counties, most of which already swing Democratic and have barely won more than Beto O'Rourke's 2018 total. The loss was so bad that Texas' longtime Democratic Party chair, Gilberto Hinojosa, Hinojosa stepped down, but not before he partly blamed Democrats' loss on the party's support for trans rights. Shocking. Texas Democrats perennially claim to be on the brink of turning the state blue, but this latest beatdown ought to be the first that yields a true reckoning with why the party continually disappoints in elections in a state which, the party sages tell us, demographically ought to be shifting to their advantage. But given the recent tenor from the party's centrist wing, from Hinojosa, down to uh, his Gen Z heirs apparent, the lesson of Allred's loss, that no amount of money or online clout can paper over a candidate's weaknesses, could just as easily fall on deaf ears. In his concession speech last week, Allred stumbled through a Winston Churchill quote, courage is the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. It took courage, he said, for him and his supporters to participate in American election, despite the odds against them. Yet his strategy reeks of cowardice. Mirroring the Harris campaign, Allred ran to the right on the border and threw trans people under the bus. Counter to Harris, Allred tried differentiating himself from Biden, even voting to condemn his open borders policies. It wasn't enough. The Democratic Party prefers candidates, particularly in red states, who can raise a lot of money quickly. Allred visited just 34 of Texas's 254 counties, signaling an aversion to public confrontation, but spent a mind-boggling uh, $57.75 million on advertising and marketing to make up for it. How? He relied heavily on donation centers in other states, particularly the suburbs of Washington, D.C., receiving far fewer smaller dollar donations in-state and leaning on political action committees to make up the difference. When journalists and friendly critics pointed out the obvious risks to his strategy, Monique Alcala, the executive director of the Texas Democratic Party, said on X that they were spreading misinformation and should please sit down. As Brandon Roddinghouse told Texas Monthly, Beto worked from the bottom up. Allred worked from the top down. This is a very important thing for people to recognize, okay? Beto O'Rourke's popularity came from not only his ground game, but also from the way he campaigned. He ran a pro-LGBTQ, pro-immigrant, and anti-gun campaign. He's got the closest a Dem has ever gotten uh, to, to winning over a Texas seat since the party switch. Okay? Important to understand that. Now, Beto was far from perfect, but it seems time and time again that people respond positively. People respond positively 
when you go out and meet them where they're at. As early as the primary, fellow Texas Democrats were ringing alarm bells about a wayward campaign, but online, Allred's team seemed more interested in squashing intraparty dissent than winning in November. After Jen Ramos, a member of the Texas Democratic Party's executive committee, told the Texas Tribune in August that Allred was taking the party's liberal base for granted, a group of influencers and organizers went out of their way to discredit me, Ramos told me, adding that she was accused of aiding and abetting Ted Cruz. Wow. Shocked to find out, guys, that the method of yelling at people who are ringing the fucking alarm bells about not being uh not not doing enough to activate your base of support and relying on them to turn out without offering them any assurances that you will defend them was an unsuccessful strategy oh my god olivia juliana a 21 year old influencer who spoke at this year's democratic national convention and was advertising the all right campaign on youth voter turnout took a similar line to alcala writing on x in the wake of the tribune article anyone saying colin allred hasn't intentionally engaged the base or traveled the state is spreading misinformation and frankly helping ted cruz's campaign divide the democratic party since last week's election juliana has been ranting online against communism as if a tiny ideological milieu in the united states let alone texas played a major role in their loss these people would rather fucking fight imaginary communist demons in their fucking minds than actually run a normal campaign what a frustrating reality but it doesn't matter because the democratic party will always uplift fucking that is just what it is if your strategy relies on you to elevate graceful winners like fucking jamie harrison for example why would any of these careerist hacks actually get their shit in order they're just going to keep failing upwards. That's why you have the likes of that Lindy Lee woman, okay, who was uh, more predisposed with rat fucking the Bernie campaign, talking about how Bernie bros did online harassment uh, towards her. And, and she was rewarded. She was fucking rewarded. These guys are the ones who get rewarded, okay? There is no interest in winning. There's only an interest in losing gracefully and uh, and and holding true to the the ideological commitments that the democratic party has to third way neoliberal politics even though it is very obvious that absolutely no one in the real world looks at that and goes i want that that's for me okay you can write endless you can read endless think tanks backed by big pharmaceutical corporations and the healthcare industry that tell me that it's actually bad to have Medicare for all. But when you go and talk to normal people in the real world and you go, hey, wouldn't it be nice not to worry about, in the words of Felix Biederman, a car payment style bill the moment that you visit a hospital? Virtually every single normal American is going to look at that and go, yeah, I like that, actually. That seems... You know, that seems insane that we have to do that. Okay? <sighs> Mother Jones's Serena Lynn had asked the All Red campaign in October why they'd avoided larger rallies, but was directed to Juliana, who claimed it was a more strategic, targeted way of reaching people. All Red was focusing more on identity-focused coalition groups, Lynn uh, wrote Lynn, including Republicans for All Red, chaired by former Representative Adam Kinzinger. Wow! Remember Adam Kinzinger and his assessment of what I was saying about the leaning on the Republican shit, who he, uh, who he claimed was uh, how to lose the election in 2028. Here, let me let me pull that tweet real quick. Let me let me show you what the fuck is really good, just so you understand the mentality of these generational. Fucking okay, these guys once again are more predisposed with maintaining their ideological commitments to third way neoliberalism and and uh inherently reactionary points of view uh, and they want to win by those standards let me explain something to you this is that adam kinzinger how to guarantee a loss in 2028 says adam kinzinger on november 6th i don't want to say i told you so but this run to the moderates looks like a spectacular failure i said on the night of the election um Lethal military, muscular border policy, and parading Liz Cheney didn't swing votes in Dems' favor and only worked to normalize Republican positions. To which I responded with, Brother, have you looked at the election results? She lost because she listened to people like you. But fear not, there is a metric ton of 
patriotic commentary on every fucking outlet that your grandparents and your parents listen to, priming them against these uh, uh, these these secret that are the real reason why the Democrats lost. The left is the real reason why the Democrats lost. Okay. Fear not, everybody. Everyone is going to keep running the same idiotic route over and over again as the media uh, deludes anyone over the age of 45 that still listens to f***ing newspapers into a false narrative. Republicans for All were chaired by former Representative Adam Kinzinger, prominent anti-Trump Republican, also endorsed Harris. The more likely reason All Red wasn't more regularly found out on the hustings was because Texas Observer pointed out that his stage presence was underwhelming that he lacked even basic charisma. Meanwhile, Allred's outreach to farmers who make up 14% of the state's workforce and more than 12% of the U.S. total, by far the most of any state, was sporadic at best. Clayton Tucker, a rancher and a chair of the Lampasas Democratic Party, based in the 712-square-mile county with a population of fewer than 24,000, said between the crowded Democratic primary and election day, there was quite a dry spell in communication. Tucker lobbied hard for Allred to appear before the farmers and lay out his vision. Finally, in October, in a, uh, finally, in October, what is this? Trump's Israel ambassador said, yeah, no, I know. What? Hope you're fucking ecstatic. Oh, Trump's Israel ambassador has said there's no such thing as a West Bank. It's only Judea and Samaria. Hope you're fucking ecstatic about your apathy to selection, bud. Glad you get to stay on your high horse while throwing Palestinians under the bus. Number one, I don't think you care about Palestinians. Uh, clearly, you don't. Okay. And I don't know why you have to even try to act like you care because you think you're winning some fucking talking point. There was never a moment where I didn't say that Donald Trump would be worse for the Palestinians overall. Okay. But Kamala Harris also straight up lost the election specifically because she personally ran a strategy of actively pushing anyone who cared about Gaza away from the party. Not only did she not separate on Biden on a multitude of different issues, she certainly did not separate on Biden on this objectively unpopular policy of Gaza. And that is precisely why she lost. And liberals like you don't care about the truth at all. And that's why you're in here doing fucking, uh, you're in here being an inhuman piece of shit. Now, what do I mean by you being an inhuman piece of shit? Donald Trump's Israel ambassador said there's no such thing as the West Bank. Meanwhile, Biden had said that there is a red line that will be enforced where Israel will no longer have weapons transfers unless they commit the 350 food trucks and humanitarian aid trucks crossing over the boundary into North Gaza. Israel never followed through on this. And the Biden administration, as of today, as the deadline has uh, closed for this enforcement, has said... It's okay. They violated it, but it doesn't matter. There was no real red line to begin with. So talk to me about why you actually care about the Palestinians. You clearly do not. Okay, show me a clip or a video of Donald Trump ever saying something that is a drop of empathy for Palestinians. My friend, you are so fucking stupid. I am openly telling you what I said time and time again. Donald Trump is no friend to the Palestinians is what I specifically said. But you know what Donald Trump did do? Okay, he took advantage of the fact that it was the Democrats that were funding and facilitating this genocide. He also then turned around and went to Dearborn and did the aesthetic posturing as though he actually cares about fucking Arabs or Palestinians at all. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris actively kicked Arab delegates that they had invited to the fucking campaign from the uh, from the the speaking engagements that she was uh, doing. She sent Richie fucking Torres to Michigan, a person with zero name recognition, to uh, basically say, no, do not worry. There is no real red line in fucking North Gaza, just like there was no real red line in Rafa. We are going to keep killing people. She, spent, she sent Jeffrey Epstein's best friend, okay, William Jefferson Clinton, to Michigan to talk also about Judea and Samaria. So what the fuck are you talking about? Why is it so easy to find clips of Kamala saying she will give Palestinian voices a seat at the table, but Donald Trump, all she does is call Biden a Palestinian for not literally bending over to Israel. You are not going to be able to convince a single fucking person when obviously, Kam if you're not recognizing the metric ton of harm Kamala Harris did to herself by not recognizing the uncommitted movement as a serious danger to her re-election chances, to the re-election chances of the Democrats, you're yelling at no one, okay? There was never a moment where I said Donald Trump is going to be better for the Palestinians. Find me a clip where I said that, 
and we'll have a discussion, okay? You can't because that doesn't exist because I openly recognized that Donald Trump will be worse overall. I actually maintained the position that he will permanently annex the West Bank. Why did I say that? Because he got $100 million from Miriam Adelson to specifically do just that. All you do is pretend they're one-to-one, -one, bro. It's sad. No, what's sad is your pathetic inability your absolute fucking inability to recognize what is happening, what is unfolding in front of your fucking eyes. Notice how you're no longer talking about how Gaza is going to get wiped out under Trump because it already did get wiped out under Joe Biden. So shut the fuck up. You do not give a single shit about Palestinians. And it's so unimaginably cruel that you could just turn around and use Palestinians as you champion their death and destruction as a simple talking point in an effort to cope for the dog shit campaign that your candidate of choice ran. Just be honest. Be honest with myself and be honest with yourself. Don't try to present yourself as a defender of the Palestinians, okay? You're saying they're already wiped out as the most white thing I've ever heard. Jesus Christ, you really think the situation can't get worse? How sheltered. The most white thing you've ever heard. Man, shut the fuck up. Your brat campaign sucked dick, okay? And now we have to live in the fascist reality of the United States of America. Go fucking chirp about how you were excited, salivating at the prospect of Muslims being deported more. This is not an area where you can do that, okay? Brat bombs, baby. Liz Cheney. Let's hug and kiss Liz Cheney. That'll surely win us the election. Suck my fucking dick. You and the dumbasses like you that don't even get paid by the DNC to repeat the DNC talking points and continue this fucking insane hallucination that the Kamala campaign did everything she fucking could, got owned, got her shit pushed in, specifically by an incompetent loser who is a direct fucking fascist, and now the country is worse as a consequence of that. And you're coming to the one guy who kept ringing the fucking alarm bells because in spite of my moral disagreements with a administration continuing to do genocide, I still understood that it would be far worse if Donald Trump was president. Stop yelling at me. Go and fucking read a goddamn book or something. Holy shit. It's so crazy to come in here after this ginormous electoral defeat and yell at the one guy who was like, don't do this. This is going to cost you the fucking election. You absolute dumbass. You monstrous scumbag piece of shit, dude. You guys love losing, okay? That's it. You love to lose. You love to lose because the Republicans are at least honest about their racism. You don't give a fuck. It's never going to harm you. You're most likely a white dude living in the fucking suburbs. All you love is just doing debates online. And this way, you get to stand as a morally superior being to Donald Trump's unimaginable cruelty. Well, it simultaneously doesn't impact you at all. And maybe deep down inside, you kind of like it. That's why so many dumb fucks are now chirping about how excited they are that they are, how excited that they are at the prospect of Donald Trump fucking flattening Gaza as though it hasn't been fucking flattened already. That's the whitest thing you've ever said, bro. Saying Gaza was... Flattened is the whitest thing you ever said. No, it's just the objective reality. Gaza has been flattened. 2.5 million people displaced, and they're getting pummeled right now under the Biden administration. If you actually cared about that sort of thing, you'd be fucking smiling and dialing your congressperson instead of chirping a goddamn Twitch chat about it. the one fucking person that has not only been so restrained and so balanced in this analysis, but has also made an argument to convince liberals that this is an electoral defeat waiting to fucking happen. Racist fucking liberals, dude. You gross me out. You're disgusting. You're virulent little racist monsters, okay? That's why you fucking lose every goddamn time. You have no convictions whatsoever, and you're just a fucking bot that basically says whatever the DNC is saying, whatever the Democratic Party is saying, whatever MSNBC is writing about, I'm just going to repeat over and over and over again, no matter how fucking stupid it is. There's no better... Like, there is no clearer fucking indication that you are just as delusional as these fucking QAnon losers on the right, then coming in here after this massive fucking electoral wipeout and being like, you know why? I'm going to fucking sit here and flex. I'm going to be like, oh, look at you fucking Muslims for your apathy. I didn't even demonstrate apathy, you dumb fuck. I openly stated what was happening. If that frustrates you, then maybe, you know, do some internal examination. Figure out why you have such cognitive dissonance. Yeah, these guys are like, you're the reason why we lost. Yeah, dude, me, I'm the reason. If they had listened to me, I think that they would probably have, unironically, a better shot at winning the goddamn election. Hmm. So, yeah.
in that regard, I am the reason why the Democrats lost because they wouldn't fucking listen to me. Yeah. Scratch a liberal and a fascist bleeds. For years, Texas was seen as nothing more than the ATM for Democrats' national aspirations. The candidates would fly through Houston, Dallas, and Austin for a couple swing, get donor parties, and leave soon thereafter, knowing full well the state wasn't in play. <laughs> But as other states such as Florida and West Virginia became less competitive and campaigns like O'Rourke showed outsiders that Texas could perhaps swing blue, donors' attention shifted. This has been a blessing and a curse. On one hand, candidates can potentially tap into a wider market, so to speak, to fund their campaign. On the other hand, it disconnects candidates from the prerequisite for local support. The more cynical among us might view this as a racket. Consider the case of Isaiah Martin, a centrist Gen Z Houstonian and a friend of Giuliano's who briefly ran for Congress. In September 2023, he posted a single ad that went viral, landing him on MSNBC to talk about his vision for the country. He acquired Anika Albred, oh, almost got it, who previously worked for Blue Dog Representative Murray Glusenkamp Perez, also another fucking grifter, as his campaign manager raised about 400 grand, mostly from donors outside the district, and a couple months later, unceremoniously dropped out. Despite his electoral face plan, he became an influencer touring the country for the Harris campaign. The Texas Democratic Party is replete with organizers such as these, who always seem to fail upward. Other longtime Democrats have pointed to MJ Hagar as similar as a similar problem. She's raised all that money and where's she now? Far from the limelight, working for Deloitte. There's not much money to be made when you invest in grassroots, Tucker told the New Republic. I think we're too culturally obsessed with commercials and mailers. Speaking for myself, no mailer or commercial has ever convinced me of anything. But a conversation, whether that's over the phone or in person, has. Some have given up on the demographics of destiny argument in which liberals assume the changing racial makeup of the state would inevitably mean Democrats would sweep into power. Tucker, for instance, said an emphasis on economic populism is popular in the rural counties that lie devastated to this day by NAFTA. But even as the democratic myth lies dying, the next one has been born, that young people armed with technology and social media will connect with voters to drive a blue wave. A lot of these fucking influencers, all they do, and I'm no disrespect to the Harry Sassans of the world, but all they do is convince old people that they're doing youth outreach. That's it. And a lot of the motion that they have is within the confines of the Democratic Party, the establishment. That's it. DC guys look at a young person that sounds exactly like them and go, oh my God, this guy's killing it. Okay. This guy's fucking killing it. Holy shit. Turns out the youth love this. It's pure graft. That's all it is. Okay. But it doesn't matter because. Here's why it does not fucking matter, okay? The reason why it does not matter is because they will get elevated. They will uh, develop a platform of prominence, even if that platform does not yield positive results, even if that platform does not yield uh, any sort of electoral victories for the Democratic Party. It does not matter. We just keep elevating fucking losers, okay? In late April 2023, Axios reported that Biden's 2024 digital strategy would entail an army of influences, employing several staffers to focus specifically on young and suburban voters through content creators and offering the White House and Biden campaign on the road to hundreds of unpaid social media stars. Four months later, the liberal super PAC Progress Now dropped 70 million on a project per Politico to make Joe Biden cooler online. Around the same time, Democrats' campaign tech companies were acquired by a private equity firm that laid off a quarter of its employees. A new emphasis on influences was concurrent with a shriveling legacy con uh, consultant sector effectively cutting out the middleman, but this didn't entail better results. After the election, the nation's Ellie Maisel proclaimed that liberals need to build their own Joe Rogan, perhaps a natural conclusion to the strategy, combating thick-skulled propagandists with thick-skulled propagandists. If there's a takeaway here, it's that the Allred campaign was more of a social media campaign than a Senate campaign. Like McGrath and Hagar before him, Allred and his team were relying on high-profile surrogates and an ungodly uh, amount of money to flood the zone. This, in some, in some respects, is not that different from the Trump method, by the way. The only difference, however, is that Trump at least engages in some level of populism, albeit a right-wing populism, okay? But some populism is a necessity. If you don't do that, then you're fucked, okay? He can come across as personable. He can come across as honest, even though we all know he's a dishonest charlatan and a fucking comment of the highest order, a person with multiple failed businesses, six bankruptcies under his belt, okay? Yes, I know, I know Mike Fuckabee is the goddamn ambassador to Israel. I know. Why the fuck are people coming in here and, and spamming this shit? I know, I already covered it, okay? I covered it a million times over. Stop. I know. 